Hello there my fellow Holotable Heroes and welcome to another Grand Arena video. So I want to take some time in this video to talk to you about how I'm preparing for Grand Arena, what tools and strategies I'm using to try and get the win whenever I can because now Grand Arena is more important than ever now that the, sh the crystals from Squad Arena has shifted in here. So we definitely want to do the best that we can just to make sure we keep earning those crystals. So in this video, I'll show you various tools. I'll be showing you my own Swagger for Life tool uh, that I'll be using, then Grand Arena Science website and uh, Swagger.gg website as well. So links to all, all of those resources will be in the description below. So just so you can go ahead and quickly visit them whenever you want. But now let's get into today's video. So I'll be talking really about three phases, uh, really. So one is uh, what do I do during the join period before I tap the join button? Then phase two, how uh, what I'm doing when I'm setting defenses, and finally third phase will be the attack phase, how I'm planning out. So throughout this video, I'll show you some different tools that I'm using. Some of my own, some are from other amazing members of our community. But anyway, let's just get started with the first thing that I do once the join period starts for Grand Arena is check that all my characters have all mods equipped because, you know, with different game modes, especially during the territory battles uh, or as well a rank raid, you know, we m often move mods around just to get the most out of the roster. So essentially, I just go through, scroll, scroll through my entire roster, make sure that every single character has mods equipped on them, especially the ones obviously that I'm planning to use, but even the ones I'm not planning to use because now the GP does not play any part at all uh, going forward, at least uh, for matchmaking. Uh, having more GP is actually good because in case of a tiebreaker, the player with a higher GP will win, so you definitely will want to have as much GP as you can, just in case of that rare occasion when the tie happens. Also, I do check are any characters uh, close to new gear or relic level before I hit the join uh, button, just to make sure, you know, after I receive my payout or get some bonus energy, uh, we'll have enough crystals or enough gear to level them up again before I hit the join period. Obviously that applies only for the characters I'm planning to use. So moving on, uh, what I also like to do is uh, ch uh, check my uh, Grand Arena history just to see how my defense has performed. Um, so let me just hop over there now. So what you do is you literally just go to your profile and GAC history here. And then you can obviously switch to, you know, the latest 5v5 round we had. Um, and then just choose defense. And then you can see how your defensive team pers performed. Are there any teams that obviously didn't perform according to your expectations? Were they just too easy to beat or they didn't snipe any banners? See if you can find a way how to improve these teams. Uh, obviously, you know, the number of banners alone is not always an indicator that a team is bad. Uh, it, it really depends what did they used against it. And the next thing is, obviously, going back to the game again is... Do you want to try out some new counters? Uh, for example, now we do have Zam in here. Uh, once you put Omicron on her, uh, she really boosts, especially speed-wise, all your bounty hunters. Uh, so in that case, for example, I could be trying out in the next week uh, bounty hunters versus General Skywalker or versus Darth Revan. So for this, I will have to a little bit uh, remod them, make sure that their um, turn order is correct. Uh, so after you do your remodding, uh, the best way to check the turn order is correct. What I like to do is um, I make use of the galactic challenges we have because obviously it's unlimited battles. And as well opponents here in the final tier 10 are usually quite powerful. Uh, so for example, uh, we've got now the whole uh, trooper lineup here uh, with Shakti uh, that apparently can take out Lord Vader. Um, so in case I want to try that out, I modded my Shakti. Uh, to hopefully be the fastest, so just to verify this, uh, you can hop in the battle here and just make sure that turn order is correct. And as well, the other troopers, uh, sometimes you want to adjust certain turn order, so it's a very good way to kind of test out the turn order. So there you go, Shakti goes first, that's what I wanted, and now uh, you can just go ahead and retreat. Uh, another thing, for example, that I also was testing uh, once I did unlock my mole, I just wanted to see how much damage my mole can do. So here we go, we can now just kind of follow here the damage output of uh, Mandalorian. Obviously, this being a galactic challenge, um, you know, there are certain modifiers that maybe 
will affect a little bit here but for example here we're only getting extra critical damage whereas this uh, we, is not affected by critical damage so you know the damage for example he will be doing here it will also be the same in the actual game okay let me slow this down just to make sure we can see the damage ramping up all right it's hard to see here with all these assists so sometimes what i would do i would uh, record the footage so i can then watch it back in slow motion so that was 33k hit 51k and that's it really that's all what i do during the joint period when once i'm ready i've done all these uh, steps well not all steps always apply uh, i always do check my mods to be honest all the other steps are kind of a little bit optional it really depends but as long as my mods are equipped and ready to go i go ahead and tap that join button and then we are now moving on to phase two which is setting the defense so for setting the defense uh, there are a few things i check um so I, uh, this is my profile but just, let's just say i'm looking at uh my opponent's uh, profile in game so first things what i do is i check their uh what is now called uh, legacy championship points this just shows how active uh, were players really in previous in Grand arena now obviously somebody you know with kind of it depends again i guess in what division league you're in but where i'm at um Obviously, anything like above 900k uh, legacy championship points tells me that a player has been very active, very good Grand Arena player, and also not going too heavy on defense because, you know, all these points before were based on uh, efficiency wins. And, you know, if somebody has like, you know, three, 400, half a million points, it just tells me that that player was hardly playing. Uh, potentially, you'll be facing auto deep play defense in the old world, in the new world, maybe not so much. So, definitely, the actual points tell themselves a little bit of a story of what type of uh, grand arena player your opponent is and then obviously as you go into their inventory uh, make a note of their gp just for reference and then check how many galactic legends they have now here you can see oh got five galactic legends but happened a couple of times already that my opponent uh, had another galactic legend that would have been further down here the screen <laughs> Uh, because it didn't have ultimate yet, didn't maybe have all the Zetas. So definitely I always use now from there on out Galactic Legend filter just to make sure there isn't a little bit lower level Galactic Legend hiding somewhere because you know even lower level Galactic Legends will still require uh, you know a big effort to take it down uh, in one shot. So after I confirm the Galactic Legends and then uh, I also check their uh, Executor. Uh, do they have Executor? because uh, obviously me having an executor if they don't have it i will most likely put mine on defense if they have executor i can either choose to put mine as well on defense and then you know try the malevolence counter uh, versus or i can keep it for offense um you know to try and do mirror match but as we know so the, those mirror matches are a little bit rng dependent so at the same time i would also check uh the speeds on their razor crest uh, that they have and as well on their xanadu blood because as we know, depending on the speeds on the Xanadu Blood and Razor Crest, uh, things can go very differently. So after, uh, if I do decide to go for a mirror match after I identified their speed, uh, I go, uh, then I try in my fleet arena when I'm climbing every day to try and find somebody with the exact same or if not exact same, at least very similar speed to my enemy. So I can get a little bit of practice to just get, you know, a little bit... Um, familiar with the nuances of exact uh, mirror magic that I'll be going up at if I decide uh, to keep my executor for offense, uh, that is. Now in terms of checking mods, I'm not really too concerned usually about, you know, any specific speeds and mods that my opponents would have. Um, this kind of really depends, um, do your counters versus Galactic Legends or versus specific teams that you have already rely on certain speed or any other thing. So, the only thing for me that I rely on is I would normally use Sif Eternal Emperor versus Ray they do put it on defense so I would check actually um, what's the offense on uh, enemy Ray uh, so obviously if offense is like 8k or below uh, all you need is Sif Eternal and Ward and then if uh, Ray's offense is you know between maybe let's say uh, 8 and 10k uh, then I would also bring in armor anything above 10k <laughs> I'm not sure my Sif Eternal Emperor can handle, so in that case I'll have to plan uh, for another way to take down Annie Murray if they do put it, uh, put her on defense. 
And why I check that is so that I know will I be using armor with Sith Eternal Emperor, will I be using what there or not. So if I do decide to put my Maul on defense, then obviously armor works great with Maul. So obviously depending on your roster, depending on your counters, it's just like one example um, just to check some of those key counters or key characters that you will be using. So if you don't need them, you can then use them on defense if you want. So that's pretty much what I personally always check. I just check any Mirai, I'm not concerned about other mods really uh, from there. Now new things obviously that we do have now in the game is Omicrons. Now unfortunately there is no quick and easy way here uh, to check people's Omicrons uh, in the game yet. Uh, so there's no even indicator. So even for example here there, it's not clear does my Zem have Omicron or not. So you have to click on, a, on her. Oh yeah, she's maxed task of Omicron and now more and more characters we have you don't want to be now searching manually here for each character do they have Omicron or not so again we'll be relying on uh, uh, GG here page um, so whenever you're viewing then um, your enemy's uh, profile you can then quickly go and see they have now how do you find actually um, your opponents you just click on the GSC tab here and here you have scan player uh, and in here scan player what you will want to do is uh, you will want to put uh, in your ally code uh, so just for fun let's put my own ally code here there we go and then scan player and this will then find them according to the ally code you put in and then here you can then uh, click on the omicrons and this will then list the omicrons your opponent has so it's a very quick and easy way for you to go and do that so that's really all here for the second phase of setting the defense then obviously you're ready to set the defense and then you just have to wait for the attack phase to start and that's where the third phase starts of Grand Arena planning which is the attack phase. Uh, so the way I do it, uh, I use my attack phase planner that I created and added to my Swaga for Life website so let's just go ahead and switch over. Okay so this is it, it's a pretty straightforward, very simple planner, it doesn't go a whole lot of advanced settings but just a little bit helps out with the planning. Uh, so obviously you can choose the format, is it 5, 5v5, 3v3, you choose your league, Kyber and then set the target score and then obviously you will uh, want to place the defense that your opponent set, so this is just from one of my rounds here, so my opponent set at the top Kylo, Thane, Newt, Shakti and the bottom Talzin, Ray, Maul, but this was with Darth Revan, so it's not, don't be misled by these teams, got Darth Revan there and then Beskar, Mandalorian. And then obviously I do have to then now uh, start kind of planning what I'm going to do. So if you want a little bit as well help yourself out, uh, obviously this is week one so this won't really apply but with week two and onwards what you can do you can always, as I've shown you before um, here uh, in, GAC, uh, in GAC tab you can scan the player, input uh, their uh, ally code and then you can go ahead and view their GAC history um, obviously we do not have yet latest 5v5 information so but for week 2 we will have it so what you can do is check their defense and then what you do is uh, essentially you just compare uh, their uh, front zone teams and bottom zone teams obviously here it's hard to exactly know uh, what's at the front what's at the bottom uh, but most likely the first few teams attacked were at the bottom so if these first few teams uh, match um, what's you know on your top and bottom zones then most likely the back zone will be the same but you never know uh, so you can kind of as well predict the back zone if you want you can add some defenses there so then you can better plan here but personally I never completely rely on this history just because you never know will your opponent change up something but you know it's a nice reference tool just to have just to maybe give an idea what's hiding there at the back all right so what once that is done Obviously you can start planning your counters. Now there are various resources for planning counters. So the first one obviously is just the built-in here suggestions uh, that I have created. So if you do want to check any of those, for example, okay, how do I take down a Shakti team? Uh, you just click on the YouTube play button and then it shows you here various teams uh, that I have used before. Uh, same thing you can do for Kalo, for example. And if you do want to watch uh, any of the videos, you just go ahead. Uh, tap on the video here and it will then take you to the video uh, where I'm showing you the team that I use and how it works um, So that's one way of doing it, but obviously I'm just a one person So there's only so many counters I can cover myself um, So another uh, great website uh, for counters is Grand Arena Science 
um, where you can again they've got 5v5 free, v, free and ships counters they've got everything here uh, so again if you take Shakti for example you can just search here okay I want to have Shakti and it was with Rex and Fives for example so you, you can just kind of go through that and then again it's a very similar uh, system as I have they show you different teams how easy it is banners and things like that and again if you hit the play icon it will simply take you uh, to the video again explaining you uh, how to do this kind of stuff and another new feature that they've added is actually you can just uh, go straight through to meta report for this particular team just to see you know the win rates and the other variations that may not be included in the counters now of course if you do not find any suitable counters either on my own website grand arena science you can always just go here to the main database and again you know search for whatever counters you want um, one useful thing is for example if you didn't know you can actually click on specific characters here so I chose a very particular here lineup of Grievous uh, and for example now you can exclude actually Galactic Legends you're not interested in you know Galactic Legends counter you can always go exclude them there um, for example you go like okay I like the Palpatine lineup let's see what we can do with Palpatine oh okay it's just one lineup however you can actually toggle this 99% uh, of cutoff and then you do get a lot more options just to give you better idea so this is a very advanced tool here as well just to look at uh, just to see what other people are doing and how reliable potentially it could be this is especially useful when you're researching uh, new counters so up next obviously is to make sure you add your all offensive teams for example I have mine kind of preloaded but for this particular run I did have my Talzin available still and then also need to add my ships obviously uh, I kept my negotiator and executor I didn't put on defense this time use it for offense and then you can just start planning um, so first things obviously um, you would want to go through the any teams that you have only one counter for for example this ray was very high offense so I was not able to use Sif Eternal on it and it was a very challenging ray team so I think the only reliable high banner win for me was Jedi Master Kenobi um, now the rest of the here board again you have to kind of a little bit see what I have now my opponent in this particular case had Lord Vader and to be honest I think pretty much everybody put Lord Vader on defense he wasn't at the front though so I wanted to make sure I do have a counter for it so then I kept my master look uh, for the back in case I need him and then the rest uh, the way it goes for example I used the Palpatine Vader this is this lineup for Beskar uh, I just decided to use troopers on Talzin here uh, and then finally versus the small Darth Revan team I use my Qui-Gon Omicron squad to burn through those guys so as you're going through obviously this is optional if you do want to have you know target score and go for average banners uh, but obviously if your opponent hasn't attacked yet this won't mean much but as you're going through you can always obviously put in the number of banners you were getting versus these teams I'm not sure I'm just making this up I'm still not used to uh, the whole new banner uh, systems that we have here it's a bit higher than before so after you clear the bottom zone uh, obviously then you can go ahead and uh, fill in the back zone as well so in this particular case uh, my opponent had Mon Mothma at the back uh, as well as Lord Vader as predicted uh, and then finally they also had their own mole team here um, so it was a very dangerous one so what I want to do here then is obviously look at again what teams remaining I only have one single counter for and this was Lord Vader the only way I could do this is uh, using my um, Jedi Master Luke's Jedi team to take it out so after I've done that I obviously decided to do rest of the planning here now this one of my team had Kal Katarn in there so they were very fast and I only used my troopers uh, so I decided to do Sif Eternal Sorrel there Again, Maul, he had a relicate Maul very fast, so if Maul gets going, he could be in trouble. So I decided to, to probably use Ray there, but before I did these two battles, I wanted to really make sure to clear the top first so I can get to the fleet zone. So in that case, I can't clear the bottom, at least I'll be able to clear three zones here rather than, you know, clear this and then not being able to potentially take these guys out. Um, so I used my Maul versus their Shakti. Um, then I did uh, Mon Mothma versus their Newt, uh, Bounty Hunters there and uh, Night Sisters over there. So that was kind of the plan again, you know, just kind of going through, adding banners, 
as as you're going on i don't really know i don't i don't know how many banners i actually got i'm just making this up okay and now we get to the fleet zone and my opponent as most people do put their executor on defense and i think there was as well uh executrix on defense for him um so obviously what i'll do uh mirror match and then this one so, and same thing for fleet if you do need some you know help a little bit uh with counters uh you can again click on the icon there and it shows you different counters how you can use uh same thing you know for executrix very uh quite a few options here for you to go through and try out uh, but before I do go into fleet zone, I would make sure I clear the bottom first. So I've, uh, I've done that. Uh, I don't know how many banners I got. Doesn't really matter. Uh, because um, why I like to do fleet battles at the very end is because that's where you can have the biggest banner swings. Uh, just because there are more banners to to gain or lose. Especially with, you know, how many reinforcements you bring in. So if you, if you haven't done particularly well at the bottom zone... Uh, and you know, then you can see. Okay, do I need to now hit risk and go in with one only one reinforcement in, or maybe no reinforcement, just to squeeze out extra few banners? So definitely, I do recommend doing fleets uh, at the very last. And there you go, guys. That's kind of all the tools and all the different strategies here that I'm using uh, for all three phases of Grand Arena. So the join period, defense, and attack. Hope you find it useful and helpful. I know that we all have different rosters uh, as well, different strategy, different tools that we're using. So these are just the, the tools I use. Let me know in the comments below what you guys are using. But until then, have fun, enjoy your life, and may the RNG be with you, my friends.